my father and other men that went out and left their families crying, probably hungry, for that road alone, for the road. I may be a socialist in certain people's eyes, but I never vote socialist. I still vote unions. We felt it was our duty to vote loyalist and to keep Ulster loyalist. I'd be feared to go anywhere, you know. I just stuck to the new road. And the loyalist people in the Shankill Road are still united. They are still strongly loyalist people attached to the British Parliament. Shankill Road people are British, and uh, this is something that has been engendered into them. We're proud to be the red, white, and blue. In the Beardo Bar on Belfast Shankill Road, every night is music night. For seven years now, these people have been at the centre of the North's bloodiest violence. Just a year ago, five customers were machine gunned to death in this very bar. But undaunted, the music spells out a no surrender message of loyalty to Queen and Kingdom from a most loyal community. My father and other men but they went out and left their families crying, probably hungry, for that road alone, for the road. So they would. They believed in the road, they believed in the union, so they did. And they would have sacrificed everything for that, so they would. Now it doesn't happen to be that. No, but don't uh, talk to me as a politician. Talk to anyone. Talk to any of the people on the Shankill Road. The Shankill Road's only a name now. Changes everywhere. Uh, I'm not saying the people has changed. It's just the troubles and everything. It's not just the same. The Lord was still always Shankill to me. My father, as people, as in his house, over a hundred years. Over a hundred years, he, they're there. My father's on at 65. Still there. He's still there, and I'm still there. There's the troubles which are caused by the violence, and there's the troubles which are caused by the whole process of redevelopment. On the Shankill, in fact, a lot of people feel, and this was the reason the Save the Shankill campaign was set up in the first place, that the bulldozer has done as much, if not more, damage than the bomb. Livis Flats, synonymous with militant republicanism, dominate the new houses of the lower Shankill. Two communities which have been at each other's throats for generations lie huddled side by side. One factor common to both communities is the squalid cluster of houses in the terraced back streets. In 1973, 95% of the houses in the lower Shankill were deemed unfit for habitation. Most of the area's houses have no baths or inside lavatories. Many are without hot water. A community brought up in the myth that they were the chosen people is beginning to have second thoughts. Their road, their community is being changed and they don't like it. I think it has affected old people and young people terribly because the old people depended on neighbour going in to make a wee cup of tea and for to go a message and especially in the winter when they needed their fire lit, when they needed a wee bit of comfort and especially late on at nights for frightened anybody coming to their doors. Those people were all disheartened. Those people were moved and made to go to flats it was just like a, just like a big block tell them. They had neither could get up nor down. And the price of living here, of what they want for houses, just doesn't meet our means. If we want to go out and buy our children or their clothes and feed them and keep them the way that you should be, we can't do it and pay these big rents for the new houses. All we wanted here was a wee terraced house. We could have did without a garden. We could have modernised the houses that we were in with a bathroom extended the working kitchen. That would have been good enough for us. From one point of view, the first shots of the present troubles were fired here, outside the Malvern Arms, just off the Shankill, ten years ago. A young Catholic was murdered, and a new Protestant folk hero was born. 
Protestant militarism, dormant for years, found new life and encouragement in the Shankill back streets. But the sporadic savagery of those early years has now so spread that hardly a household in the Shankill has remained unaffected by the violence. The McLean family were recently separated for 18 months. Gus McLean, the father of six children, was a prisoner for that period in Long Cash. Crammed into a two-bedroom terraced house, life has never been easy for the McLeans. When he was in, I was bad with my nerves, and I was on a lot of tablets, you know. I was to go into hospital and all with my nerves, and I couldn't get in. I didn't need to look after the children. Then my mommy died, and he was in, and my brother died. He was found down in Shanko, and they wouldn't let him out for the funerals and nothing. And I had it right and hard, you know. <coughs> well, you got out of Long Cash 18 months ago. Mm -hmm. how, how have you fared in readjusting and readapting to normal life? Well, I feel awful hard. And it's a bit strange to you because uh, houses and streets in the Shanko Road are locked down, which were there when I went there. You know, they these new <coughs> streets down the road. And they have price them there. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I suppose we're working well like them. For the first time in possibly 50 years, the loyalist people of the Shanko Road have got their eyes opened. I mean, for 50 years, the loyalist people in the Shankill thought that they were better off than their Catholic neighbours. This was something that was drummed into them. And unfortunately, the Catholic people accepted this. But when one looks at the conditions that both Protestants are living in the Shankill and on the other side, the Catholics are living in the fold, there's absolutely no, no difference. And for the first time, as I've said, the Shankill people have realised this and they're no longer prepared to be led by the old uh, colonel-type unionists. And they're now looking for people who are prepared to work for them. Unless we are brought up together and educated together uh, and gradually there is mixing in the different communities where people are living together, uh, this is the only way it will come by education. We have been educated, purposely educated away from each other. Paradoxically, in a community that makes a great public show of its Protestantism, less than 2% are churchgoers. This 2% are in the main from the more affluent Upper Shankill, what many would call solid Protestant faces. Many of them clerks and senior tradesmen in the shipyards and engineering works. These people, the backbone of Ulster Unionism, have always done reasonably well. An elite by Shankill standards, raised on a diet of full employment and the Holy Scriptures. I was afraid, and I went and I hid your talent in the ground. The parable of the talents. We've all been given something. We've all been given a job to do. But the, but the real message behind this is that this man who buried his talent did nothing. This was the cardinal sin, to do nothing. We have come to a point of moral crisis. Something that's of monumental importance. A crisis in the morale and the morals of a nation. And the question that lies before the population is whether the population is going to act or whether it's going to quit. Not so long ago I was in Dublin at a conference and I motored through the most of Dublin and went out towards Killiney and there were certain parts of Dublin that were very working class with almost markets in the streets and fruit sellers and that and thousands of people just teeming one against the other and I realised that, that many people in the north of Ireland just don't know how big a piece of real estate that the Republic of Ireland is and how many people and that these people don't really care one way or the other, many of them, of what's going on in the north. And I compared this to sitting in my car driving down a street at a quarter past one in the morning to go to some home 
when there's, when there's trouble on, when there's a caper on, as they say, and the streets deserted and the street lamps, half of them out, and that chilly feeling that one gets. And I realised the difference between the two environments, between Belfast in the mid-70s and Dublin in the mid-70s. The kindness of people in the South and the kindness of Dubliners in general in their comments and that uh, are always very gratifying, but it's frightening to realise the ignorance of our own fellow Irishmen, of their own brother Irishmen in the North. There's something terrible has happened that this drift, this like two icebergs that have drifted apart where communication has broken down and we don't know each other. What do the people of the Shankill think of the South the Republic? Well, it's hard really to say. I believe that they look upon them as the enemy, the old big brothers watching you type of thing. And they can't understand the, the, the South's attitude, the contraceptives and divorce, etc. Do you think there's a lot of ignorance, a lot of myths growing yes, up about the I, South? I believe that it's possible, yes, but, I mean, the sea cross grow was nobody better. He's just a green Tory as far as the majority of the people in the Shankill's concerned, and there's no great love for any anyone in the South, if you know what I mean. We have a message that's very vital... Traditionally, the Shankill Road has always been a great haunt for the Saturday bargain hunter. And even in these troubled times, there's a vibrancy about the road on a Saturday that you won't find in any other part of Belfast. Street corner evangelists and gospel groups are still a feature of the Saturday scene. In the past, Dublin housewives travelled here in search of bargains in the shops and stalls. A few Dubliners would have ventured here for years now. Today, the Republic associates the Shankill with sectarian bigotry and violence. Most locals are uncomfortably aware that it's the sinister and bloody reputation of their community that has brought most attention to the Shank. A reputation that most of the residents would like to live down. We think that if the people of the South would come up and visit us more and find out our attitude, that they would find out that we weren't the monsters that they think we are. You people are all Shankill Road loyalists. <coughs> Loyal to what? Well, uh, in, in our tradition, we are loyal to the Crown of England. Why? Because it's our tradition and our way of being brought up. What would you be afraid of becoming in a, in a 32 county Ireland? Well, that's just the thing, you see. The people of Ulster want to keep Ulster British. They want to keep it loyalist. And our, well, I wouldn't say we have a fear of a united Ireland, but the standards of living that we have here are far superior to what they have in the South. A lot of us have great difficulty in understanding the type of allegiance that you've got to what to us are very outdated symbols, King Billy fighting a battle 300 years ago, and Orange or, or the Orange Order, which was founded 200 years ago. How do you explain this type of loyalty that you identify through these type of symbols? Well, it's just a loyalty. You were brought up. And, well, to me, it was more of a fiesta. Just the way the Spanish would have looked forward to it, something to take the children to see, the bands playing in one thing or another. Mrs. Ferguson, were you, I see you nodding your head there. Were you, were you very conscious of being the, of the, the Shankill Road type of loyalist tradition? Yes, from, uh, um, I was very young. All my family were all loyalists and all voted unionists all our lives. And we were brought up to respect that. And even uh, at all elections, no matter who the man was that was put up for elections, we felt it was our duty to vote loyalists and to keep Ulster loyalists. Do, do you people visit Catholic areas? 
No. Well, no, I haven't been in a Catholic area since the troubles have mm -hmm. started. But, um, as I said previously, we had very good Catholic friends until this trouble arose. But it's just, as I say, that one side has the fear of the other. When people talk of Protestant fears of the Catholic Church, what precisely do they mean? Well, I think mainly the, the fear which is expressed and felt in the minds of most Protestants is the measure of interference and influence of the Catholic Church in the governing of era. The amount of uh, expression it can put on the policies that are put forward and implemented by the Free State or by the era government. This is the main fear because over the years this has been so evident that the Church has much more to do with the running of the country than politicians will often permit to be known. It's just a fear you seem to get and a kind of mistrust. Can I ask you about your... I think what she means is this. The distrust happens in if a Catholic uh, falls in love with a Protestant girl, uh, they must marry in chapel and the children are forced to take on the Catholic religion, which in our opinion is definitely wrong because the parents should have the right for to bring their children up whatever religion they like. So really it's a, it's a twofold fear that you've got of, of unification. It's, it's on the one hand it, an emotional commitment to a link with Britain, but on the other hand a, a fear of Catholic Church interference in state matters. A fear of being submerged under the influence of the Catholic Church, I would say is the main fear of a tremendous amount of Protestants. The Shankill Road people are a, a race of people set apart in Belfast, just as the Sandy Road people and the Ballamacarrot people. Now, the Shankill Road people are a buoyant people. They'll never be beat, and they wouldn't even know if they were beat. Uh, this, this is just their way. They'll beat their drums, and they'll go where they're going, and they'll not be shifted in their views. Uh, but over a period of time, their attitudes gradually change that they're perhaps not just as harsh as they used to be, and perhaps over a period of time that might be the solution. But at the moment, you, d you only have to prick no the surrender. skin. It's no surrender. If you prick the skin at all, it's no surrender. And uh, this is the background of fear. It, it, it's fear more than anything else. The long cash bus has become a permanent feature in the community. Almost 200 of the neighbourhood's families have a relative or two serving a prison sentence. In a place like Long Cash, 30 minutes, you can't talk over family problems. Uh, you can't talk about children the same, and they seem to grow distant from uh, you. At night, you know, you feel it once you put the children to bed. It's very lonely. With my children, they think their father works there. You have to watch what you say when you go on your visit. You have to watch you, you talk to somebody and they say to you, uh, how long were you talking? Did you go in for a drink? How long did you stay? These sort of things, you know, seem to play on their minds. Um, it, it just really goes down to, uh, it's like a, just a jealousy all the time. Have many, many marriages broken up because of long cash, because of a husband being taken away, being sentenced? Yes, quite a few have uh, divorced their husbands after so many years, especially uh, men that have got life, long-term prisoners, life, uh, things like this, women can't stand up to the strain. They still maybe send their children up to see their husbands, but they don't go. Well, all, all your husbands are, are inside for political offences. Has this in any way altered your attitude to the politics of Northern Ireland? Well, me personally, it hasn't. Uh, altered my political views in any way, so it hasn't. I'd like to see it come to an end, but not not to give up Ulster. How would you describe a place like Lancashire and the time you spent inside it? A concentration camp. Poor. Very poor. Did you get depressed? I did, yes, very depressed. But that, uh, 
And it was because of the way we were treated. Because the food situation was very poor. And of course the family being separated from the family. The family separated from the family. Mm -hmm. But since you got out 18 months ago, how have you, you're a painter by trade. Mm -hmm. How successful have you been in, in trying to get, get work? Well, I'm not a success at all. I've had tried places, and they just give you a shoulder. Parts of the town, which you can't go to, is the other part, though, because of troubles. What do you think your future, the future holds for you? Very bleak. Very bleak. Margaret, what was life like when, when, when your husband was in Lancash with, he was left with six children? I had a lot of problems with children, but especially the boys, you know. They would be out maybe and you don't know where they are and then maybe the next time the police was at the door they maybe get into a wee bit of trouble you know but uh money was a hard problem too like we were just living from day to day you know how were the children affected by the fact that the, the father was had been <coughs> taken away from them well the uh, that's him saying the boys would play on that, you know, while he was away, like. It's hard to control them. Hard to control them, like, with no father here. And, uh, but I took him down regular to see him and all, you know. But they missed him very much. Especially the wee girl at nine. She stopped eating and all for, she never, couldn't get her to eat till he come home. How real a problem is it to stretch the unemployment money. Mm, that's very bad. Just as I say, you just live from day to day, you know, and try and get through. It's very hard, like, I don't think there's any future at all here. No future. Especially for the children. Each day you will go into a different place and you have no worries about, you know, getting shot or blew up or anything like that. The only contact that Gus McLean's son Robert has ever had with Catholic boys was on a holiday two years ago in Holland. I've got pictures here. There's, it's just two. Uh, in our bedroom. There's Anthony McCann. He lives in Dallas Flats. Did you like him? He was so good. Have you seen him since you came back? No, I haven't seen him. I've seen a few of the other boys, but he's been around the town now. Why, why haven't you seen him? Well, I haven't seen him. We can't go in there where we were at earlier. Or he can't he can't come over here. We need to see him again. Do you think you will? I doubt it. Yeah. To get by in the Shankill, even in the best of times, you have to be tough. The ability to use your fists has always counted for something here. A successful career in boxing has meant a passport out of the Shankill for some, like Irish international boxer Davy Larimer. He moves to Australia at Christmas. But for most, there is nowhere. You don't do nothing, you know, you just stand about and go in, you have only a few bars to go into, you know. You get fed up. You can't go in that town drinking or nothing. The stay there on area, more or less. Can't go in the order You're looking at the same people all the time. You know? No sort of entertainment. Do you ever go into town, T Leaf? Oh, and again. <coughs> what do you do? Is there much to do for you? Is no, there, much there isn't. Last time I saw him got a kicking. Why? Who who gave you the kicking? Tiggs. Why why did they give you a kicking? Of course it's a prod. <laughs> Did you ever ever have any contact with, with uh, Catholic boys? I used to run a paper. Full of troubles. You know, all of them was Catholics. All the mates like, you know. Your mates were Catholics then? Do you ever meet them now? Yeah. Why yeah. not? Do you ever try and look them up? No. Yeah. Don't do that sort of thing. Why, why don't you? What you would happen if you met some of your old mates? Well, if it's not what happened if I've met them in a the town, like. If I've met them in their own area, they'll probably end up dead somewhere. Since the 
the advent of the Troubles, few people venture outside their own areas. As on the nationalist side, something of a siege mentality has built up in the loyalist enclaves. For these people, a brief escape from the community's tensions is afforded through the modern banality of country and western music. But in the present climate, there is little chance of a society which feels itself so physically and psychologically hemmed in, breaking away from its old tribal loyalties. Orange tunes have gained a renewed impetus from the Troubles, though new names have been added to the list of traditional heroes. This band is dedicated to the memory of a local UDA man, Ernie Elliott, a victim ironically not of the IRA but of an internal loyalist feud. The cynical might inquire whether this was the kind of society that Ernie Elliott believed in fighting for. Although quite a number of people who you would speak to may say that they don't support the paramilitaries, but deep down, they have some type of feeling for them because I think the majority of the people in the Shankle fears that, in fact, the British Army could pull out and, in fact, it would be the UDA and the UVF who would have to look to for defence. We're not in the organisations, uh, but uh, the thing is this, if our district was attacked, I dare say why we're in the organisations or not, like everyone else, we would start to defend our own homes. There's a tremendous amount of tolerance for the paramilitary organisations, which is uh, different entirely from support. Why this from, tolerance then? Because there is an ultimate fear in the minds of many people that this, before the end of the day will come, will be the last measure uh, of support in which the population will have to depend. The government has failed them so often that most people feel that at the end of the day, this whole situation will finish up in a confrontation of the two sections of the community and paramilitaries, if that comes, paramilitaries will certainly pay a major part and for that reason people are prepared to tolerate what many of them inwardly are not prepared to support. It's, uh, it's frightening that the paramilitaries have got such a hold in our society here. Uh, that goes for the other side too but we're hoping that eventually the situation will develop whereby paramilitaries themselves will go political and will see that uh, there is a way out other than violence. These Shank Hill Road workers travel daily to their work in Mackey's engineering plant in the Catholic Springfield Road by taxi. Transport chosen not for luxury but for safety. It's just on and off. In the mornings there is a, a taxi to get a taxi because it's, it's quicker. It's quicker, it's quicker going by taxi than bus. Do, both you people are Protestants from the Shanky Road. Do you feel strange? Do you feel frightened going into work in a Catholic area every day? No, no, it's free. You have to go to your work. But do you feel frightened occasionally? Well, now and again, yes. Especially, especially in the dark mornings coming down. Well, what would you be frightened of? In case someone come out to the, out to the, the barricades there. And there's do what? Barricades down, there's barricades down there at the Clonic Gardens and Lucknay Street. Have Lucknay there been Street. shootings here before? Oh yes. Oh yes. It's, it's just more or less towards it needs. How alienated do you feel from your fellow Catholic workers? Oh, well, they, and they, no, they don't do us any harm, like. The workers is the workers is special because I work along with Catholics and they don't they don't do us any harm. Are relations good in Mackeys? Oh yes. Oh, no. The question has often been asked before, but you know, is there anything that the trade unions can do or should be doing to help resolve the divisions that exist up here? They really can't do nothing about it. I don't think I don't think it could do nothing about it.
first fire speed for now. Until the fire is dead for one. The fire case is on your left there. Eh? On your left on the left hand side and down. Within industry, you must be suspicious of Catholics, because after all, it is Catholics and not loyalists who are burning industry to the ground, who are out to destroy the economy. I don't for one minute believe that all Catholics are IRA, but if you work in, in a factory where one bomb could probably close a whole plant of maybe several thousand workers, then you must look at each Catholic with tough suspicion as to whether he will be the man who will destroy that industry and end your livelihood. So, naturally all Catholics are suspect in relation to the industry. And following on from that point, could I ask you, would, if a job came vacant, would you be happier seeing it going, going to a Protestant than to a Catholic? Under the present, present climate, yeah, sure. It's very, very difficult for the Loyalist people now that the uh, divorce the ordinary Catholic from the provisional IRA man. And this is one of the great difficulties whereby a Catholic is seen now as a professional IRA man, or if not a provo, he's a sympathizer. And it's increasingly difficult for the, the Protestant to accept the Catholic. And the way it is now, there's just no communication. We have got the situation now whereby England evidently don't want us, the South don't want us. So you don't want to live in a house that nobody wants you. And I believe that some serious consideration may have to be given to a negotiated independent Ulster. Well, if you've got this negotiated independent Ulster, what would the Shankill Roader be looking for? Would he be would he settle for a power sharing type of government or would he want to all or nothing? Protestant majority well, rule. There again I believe that as far as the Catholic community is concerned, the ball is entirely in their court because uh, a while back there, for a while the feeling was that it was possible that a power sharing government could have been formed, but with the provisional's continuous activities that there's no way in which Protestants could work with Catholics while the provisionals continue their activities. But if they were to lay down arms and people were to see that there was a, a period of peace, it may be possible that for a term that an emergency coalition could be formed just to see what way things go.